no, I mean, I've, pl- I've, I've, I've composed some stuff on a, on a uh, tenor guitar. Uh, I was working on a film score and just serendipitously found an old Cromwell in an in a, uh, antique shop and sat on the floor with it in this antique shop and wrote two themes for this film I was scoring in about um, six minutes. And the thing was 40 bucks, so I, I bought it. Uh, I thought even if I don't do anything else on it, that, that was worth 40 bucks. But uh, just sort of, you know, gets you thinking in a little different kind of a way. I mean, my, I was just saying that that guitar's uh, tuned down a step thanks to Joe because when, when I went to record my last album, Tooth and Out at his house, he, he spotted my, my voice has dropped since uh, uh, the 1980s and suggested that we just take everything down a ways. And since then, I've been, you know, I've been, I've been down there finding it much, much easier to sing, and much, much better to, for us to sing together. It seems like a natural place when mm-hmm. we sing together. Our two voices aren't ideally matched, but they, they somehow seem to work. Well, I'm, you know, I'm a record producer uh, for a lot of other artists, uh, not just Bill and not just for myself. So I've been in a lot of circumstance in the studio um, where acoustic guitar uh, tone was, was primary. Um, I certainly find that small-bodied guitars are focused in a different way. As I was saying earlier, I think 12-fret guitars, there's a different overtone that seems to happen, especially with old ones. You know, I'm very partial to small body uh, Gibson L double O's and Nick Lucas models from the late 20s, early 30s. And I think there's just something uh, a little bit blurry about their sound that's really attractive as opposed to certain players who want real f- sharp articulation. You know, I like, you know, I like guitars that sound like a Monet painting more than I uh, like them to sound like a photograph. I started using a uh, really hard pick probably in the last seven years, thanks to uh, Mark Stutman at Folkway Music uh, in Canada, who's my favorite, who's my friend and favorite vintage guitar dealer in the world. And he had these special picks made, much heavier than anything I'd ever used previous. But when I bought my first guitar from him, he put a fistful of them in the, in the case. Uh, and I've been completely devoted to them since, you know, and the, and the place that he got them made uh, can't make them anymore, so they're kind of like family heirlooms. You know, I know how many I have, and if people ask me for them, it happens once in a while, I politely tell them no, because they're not, they're not disposable, you know, they've changed the way that I play. But, I mean, I used to use, like, Fender Thins. I had this thought that, and I was playing very differently then, too. So maybe Mark handing me these picks, um, it was sort of right at the moment when I, I felt like my approach to playing was radically changing. I started playing in open tunings exclusively and was having a more orchestral approach. Um, so I wasn't just strumming anymore. So this hard pick just really sort of met me when I needed to be met, I think. Well, I mean, you've got to remember, I'm, I'm basically an electric room guitar player. You know, that's how I, that's how I learned my, my trade. I was in a little punk band and I, I played a sort of room guitar that you only notice it when it stops. <laughs> <laughs> a hole appears. What happened? There? Oh, hang on, it's gone away again. Yeah. So, and and then playing solo also, I've had to put in a lot of the dynamics in my playing. I've, I've, you know, for my sins, I've always really looked at the guitar more as a percussive instrument and done the melody with my voice. So, a lot of, of the tone that I've got has actually come from my hands rather than pick. I've always used a heavy pick. You know, I found like I've spent a lot of time damping the strings at the back with this probably a special word for this part of your hand here that I don't know the technical word of, but this loose skin on the back of the hand has often been what's helped me to punctuate my sound. Now, playing with Joe and playing these songs is, is a little different because we're, we're in, a, in a, a territory now where I'm, I'm still basically playing rhythm. I mean, there's, there's still this kind of setup here. Joe's playing the, the single note stuff, I'm playing the, the, the rhythm. But there's, there's not that need for such a huge dynamic. So on a song like uh, we do a version of uh, the LNN Don't Stop Here Anymore, it's much more of a of a pick for me there's some technical picking in there I have to think about but I, but I still do think it's actually down to your hands rather than anything else that you have the biggest opportunity to, to, to express tone through the way you play rather than anything else if you haven't got it in here there's nothing else that you can pick up or plug into is going to change that interesting to me to that point how many really great guitar players and, and I, I don't consider myself I mean I'm I play different, and I, I like what I'm learning to do, but I'm talking about guitar players who are significant players. Um, my friend Bill Frizzell comes to mind immediately, whether he's playing acoustic or electric, doesn't matter what guitar, what amp configuration, what pedal, he just sounds like Bill. Um, 
you know, God bless him. He goes, to, he's been through so many guitars. Like, how does this one sound? Like, still sounds like you, Bill. You know, it's, it's, it's in his heart and it's in his hands, you know. 